Hello, all you sensationally super kids out there in TV land. It's time for another crazy cool episode of Math Homework Helpers. Stick around, we'll be right back. With a little help from your friends here on TV. Math homework helpers, it's time, time. Math homework helpers, oh yeah. Math homework helpers, it's time, time. Math homework helpers, oh yeah. Welcome, everyone, to Math Homework Helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today are two very talented teachers. From Honeygo Elementary School, we have the awesome Mr. Cook. And from Lansdowne Middle School, we have the fabulous Mr. Lenick. Hey, Ollie, are you ready for all this cold weather coming our way? You bet I am, Mr. Lenick. I just put a new layer of feathers on this morning. Oh, you mean you can change your feathers anytime you want? Well, of course I can. I always try to look as fashionable as possible. Yeah, but Ollie, you always have on the same feathers. Yeah. Well, duh, of course I do. Do you think I can just take time, just take these feathers off anytime I want? Jeez, you guys are pretty wacky. Ollie, I don't even know how to respond to that, but let's say we just get this show started. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have amazing prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you will have the chance to win one of four really cool prizes from our Math Homework Helpers Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Mm -hmm. Ms. Galenic, what are the prizes today? This week's prizes are a water bottle, a squishy guy, squishy guy, <laughs> a cool four-colored pen, and a flash drive. Flashy. Good ones today. All right. Wow, that sounds awesome. Hey, don't forget that after we help our callers with their math problems, we'll drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize wall. And the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Let's get things moving and go to the phones. The phone number to call is 410-494-1459. That number again is 410-494-1459. Who is our first caller of the day? Oh, funny you should ask. You guys ready? I hope, On yeah, the we're phone ready. now, we have Aya from Norwood Elementary. She's in third grade. Hello? Hi. Hi. Did I say your name right? No. Oh, oh man. <laughs> it's Aya. Aya. I knew Aya. that. I knew that because you call all the time. Hi, Aya. How are you? Good. Did you have a good week? Yeah. Awesome. Guess what we're ready to do? Math questions. You bet, kiddo. <laughs> what you got? We're ready. Uh, Jacob has 300, yeah, 34 um, oranges. And he had four baskets. I mean, not four. Uh, I'm at 36. 36? Um, and 36 oranges and six baskets. Okay. Got it. So 36 it. oranges and six baskets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the baskets. What's the question? Okay, what do we do now? We're ready. So you make your six baskets. You want me to draw six baskets? Yes. Oh, there, is that good? Look at that. Looks that. Like a purse That's beautiful. We'll go with a purse. I like that. Beautiful. <laughs> Love it. And what are we going to do Two. with these baskets? Three. Huh? What are we going to do huh? with these baskets? Are they just hanging out here? or? Put 34 in each. We got to okay. put the oranges in the basket? Yeah. Huh. What's the question asking? It's asking. How many oranges are in each basket? Okay. Ah. Okay. So why don't we start to split up the oranges here? 
We could do okay. this different ways, right? Like we could put different numbers in them? Like I, if I start with just one, oh. and one, oh. and one, and one, and one, and one, how many did I use up? Um, six. Good, yep. so how six many would be left? One. Well, I use six. Or six. So I would have 36 take away the six I had used. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's about 30 left. 30 still left. Should we try to put the same number in every basket? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. That oh. will be a quicker way. That helps. So what, if I have 30 oranges left, how many could go in six baskets? Huh? If I have 30, if I have 36 or 30 oranges left, how many do you want to split in each basket? I think split's a keyword. 36 in each basket. You're not going to be able to put 36 in each. So that's a tough one. That's so gonna if be we divvy it out, each one. Um, yeah, what if we just keep counting all the way to 36? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yep, th that's good. 11, 12, So I just 12. got rid of another six, right? Keep going. And that would leave me with 30 minus 6. Uh, uh, What's 10 minus 6? 10 minus 6. Mm -hmm. So in our ones place, we have 10 minus 6. Is we equal to what? 4. Good. And then we're going to bring the 2 down, so we have 24 left. Okay. Keep okay. putting one in each basket again? Yeah, just keep, keep going. going. Yeah. Okay, so I used another six, right? Yeah. So 24 minus six. Looks like we have about 18 left, I think. 18. Uh-oh. There they are. That was like a magic trick or something. Yeah, that was. That was awesome. So now I'm left with 18, so put no, six more again. I can still do Keep six. Keep going six, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So right now you have four in each you can keep going. Six baskets. With 12 left, still go? Yeah, keep going. See all what right. happens. Go all the way to 36. See how many. Wonder how many is going to be in every basket. I'm thinking right now it's evenly divided, and I think we have six, six left. Six left. Ah, go again. Well, going the opposite way now. I, I know. Changing things up. Those are beautiful oranges. Okay, they really thanks. are. The they make me hungry for oranges. apples. They're gorgeous, actually. <laughs> Kind of craving some So apples. I used all 36 <laughs> oranges. How many are in each basket? Six. Six. Six perfect. total. What, is this what you've done in school? Because if I wanted to check. You know, we also could have used like division to solve this, right? Uh -huh. And then the opposite yeah, would division. be repeated addition yep. for multiplication. We use subtraction and, multi and, and addition, Everything. but division probably would have gone pretty quick. For just oranges and baskets. Who, uh -huh. who, who knew? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic, Aya. Well, you know what's left? I do. What is it, Ali? The puck to pick a prize. There it is. Yes. All right. Aya called Here in. She wins a prize. Aya. Okay, let's, let's see what's see. coming over to Norwood for you. All right, well, the we have water a bottle. water bottle for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling, Aya. Bye. Have an Bye, awesome Aya. week. Bye-bye. Yeah. She was excited Bye. about those six oranges. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, she got a Do water bottle to put the oranges like in. Huh? I was just wondering if we had any other callers. Oh, yeah. Do we I'm ever? You guys to ready? Get a problem. <laughs> okay, so on the phone now, we have Mamie from oh. Wellwood. She's in fourth grade. Hello. Hey, Hello. Hi. Hi, Mamie. How are you? Good. We're so glad you called. You love to call, don't you? She does. Yeah, yeah she's a regular. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mamie, we're ready to help you with a math problem. What you got? What is 8,000 times 400? All right, 8, so 8, times 8,000 times 400? OK. You guys want to swap places? We'll take turns. Straight out. I think we're so. nice. We would love to take turns. <laughs> so I wrote it up sort of like how you would do it as a standard algorithm, Mamie, but I was just wondering, I really don't want to go through all of these steps. Is there sort of like a, a trick or a special way that we could multiply these two numbers together in order to get the final product? Well, I think um, maybe you do. Um, what 
two digits are the ones that we're really interested in? Eight and four. Eight and four, fantastic. So let's focus on that eight and four. I know that I'm multiplying. Uh, help me out, what is eight times four? Am I blocking the shot? No, oh, no, no, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just being My creative. Huge. I apologize. I'm being creative. Staying busy. Um, Wait, what was the question? It was eight times four. Yep. Is, um, eight Let's. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Ah, you got yeah, it. That's you it. got it. Good. Yeah, you got to know those fast. You know. Now, what do you think we should do with those zeros, Mamie? We have 32. We know that that's going to be the first part of our number. What should we do with those zeros? We can actually put them into our product. So we have these three zeros from 8,000, and we have those two zeros One, two, from 400. Three, four, five. That's a lot of zeros. That yeah, is a lot is. of zeros. Yeah, that's and a so big number. I'm just missing, I think, two things. Maybe, you know, do you, can you tell me what I'm missing? Whenever we write out problems, Ms. Delenic, what do we always, there's something that we yep. do to group up. That I makes think, it a little easier. It looks yes. like this. Commas. I think she said it, right, like Mamie? That. Commas? Comma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoosh. So if you want to count over, how many spots do I count? Comma. Three more spots and then a comma. One, two, and three. Do you know how to say that number? That's a big number. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to say that number? Uh, I'll try. Um, Three thousand two hundred. Close. Really close. That was, a good that try. was really, really close. This I like that she actually, wasn't afraid yeah. to try. This is going to be in the millions. Wow. So whenever you see two commas, that tells us that we're all the way into the millions place. Are these so oranges? That's a time. lot of oranges. Are these oranges? <laughs> That would Maybe. be awesome. That would be a lot of We need a lot C. of baskets. It would be a lot of baskets. baskets. <laughs> well, right now, I think we're just trying to read the number at this point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Mamie, we have three in the millions place, so let's try this again. Three million, and then this 200 is in the thousands place. So we're going to call it 200,000. So let's put it all together. We have three in the millions place, 200,000. How would I read that? You got yeah, it. Yeah, awesome. that's it. Nicely Good done. Job. That was great. Awesome job. Huge number. That is nice I mean, that's like really big. That. that was tough. But you know what else? Because of that tough problem, we're going to drop a puck down the puck to pick a prize puck wall, and we're going to send to you, wall. Mamie, Ooh, the four-colored pen. That's going to be awesome. There's red, blue, green, and black. That is awesome. So when you're checking your homework or checking your, your work, you can check it with a pen. Check it check with a pen, pen with four different colors. <laughs> Mamie, thank you so much for calling. Call back later. Uh, Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye, Mamie. Hey, little known fact. You guys know this? A four color pen is one color better than a three color pen. Think about it. It is. Oh, think wow. about it. I think mm. it depends on the colors. It depends. <laughs> pen. Get uh, it? You got Get the point it. on that one, man. I'm pretty oh, appreciative. Oh, the point. <laughs> You got it. That's so good. You guys ready for another caller? We are. Yes. Absolutely. You guys are two for two. Okay, on the phone now from Pinewood Elementary, we have Charlotte, who's in third grade. Hello? Charlotte. Charlotte, are you there? Hello? Hi. There she is. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Good. We're so happy you called. Do you have a math problem for us? Yes. We are so ready. We're Watch ready. this. You want to see our ready pose, Charlotte? Watch, you guys give ready pose. Ready? ready? Three, two, one, ready. Okay, you see that? Pose. That's good, right? I like that. Was I just supposed to pose? <laughs> no, you did great. Okay, I you right, did great. Right. As long as I did Just okay. do better next Thank time. Thank you. I'll try next time. I'll okay. try better. I'll try better. Okay, Charlotte, we are ready for your math problem. Okay. Laura lives 272 miles from her grandparents, 411 miles from her aunt, and 39 miles from her cousin. About how much closer does Lori live to her grandparents than to her aunt? Explain what math you used. Oh. You're going to have to start again. I know it was 272 miles for what? Lori lives 272 miles from her grandparents, 411 miles from her aunt, and 39 miles from her cousin. About how much closer does Lori live from to her grandparents than to her aunt? Oh, Explain what math you used. 
411 miles for where? For? For Aunt. The Aunt's house, OK. Can I just say, Charlotte has got a great speaking voice. She's speaking that so is. clearly. Isn't that she great? She really is. She must be a good public speaker. How far from your cousins? Um, her cousins are 39 miles. OK. And what was the final question asking us? Explain what map you used. And so we're trying and to have to. If you didn't get this down, her grandmother was 272 miles from her grandparents. So we have 272, 411, and 39. Is that correct? Yeah. OK. And you said we need to figure out about how far they about have how to much travel? How closer does Lori live to her grandparents than her aunt? Oh, got it. OK. Uh, how much, clo ah, that how makes much sense. closer? So we're going to focus on the first two numbers. And if we're trying to find out the difference between these two numbers, did you say about how much? So we're trying to find an estimate? Yeah. OK. And so we have two things that we need to do. We have to estimate, and we have to use what operation? Rounding. OK. So the rounding is going to help with the estimating. And which operation should we use in order to figure out the difference between those two? Ooh, you said a key word. I think difference. I Operation. Um, minus? Yeah, We're good. Subtract. Difference. Exactly. So we need to round the distance for the aunt's house, and we need to round the distance for the grandparents' house. About, okay. about how far is uh, the person from the grandparents' house? I'm rounding my tens or hundreds. That's a great Does question. That's a good question. Does well, it say on there what to do? No, it doesn't say tens or hundreds. OK. Well, what would you like yeah. to do? What would be the uh, closer estimate if we round it to the hundreds or round it to the tens? Um, if we round it to the hundreds. So that would give us all the way up to, I think, probably close to 300. Mm -hmm. If we round it to the tens, it would be this two would, this would make this seven around, I think it would stay the same at 270. I think 272 is closer to 270. So you want to do the same thing. <laughs> 270? I think we should, that would give us a closer estimate that way that we could you know a little bit closer as to how far away from grandparents' house. Okay. So let's do the same thing for aunt's house. Let's round. 411 to the closest 10. Which so is 410. Perfect. Good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I always make this for my estimation for my kids. I don't know. The bubble? Like you, the clouds? You're thinking about it, right? We are. <laughs> so which operation? You said uh, we're subtracting here, right? Yeah. Should we subtract? Oh, I did that wrong. 410. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Okay. No one saw anything. Oh, I see. Uh, I didn't see it because you're blocking my shot. <laughs> we have 410 minus 270. So that would be, then you'd have, so. Let's take it uh, one place value at a time. In our ones place, we have 0 minus 0 is 0. We know that. Hello. Oops. Yeah. And. We can't take 7 from 1, so let's borrow from the hundreds place and make that 3, and this becomes 11. What's 11 minus 7? 11 minus 7? Yes. 11 minus 7 equals, um, hold on, I got this. You got this, you do. <laughs> yes, you, know, you do. We got all the time in the world, just, bef just before four? 530. Yep. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> we got 4 for that, and then 3 minus 2 is 1. So, minus two is, oh, yeah. We got one. Yep, one. you got it. Uh huh. So, our estimated difference is about how many miles? Our estimated difference is about. I'll use the cloud like Miss Delenic does. Uh oh, don't mess up we're the thinking one. About it. <laughs> um, 100. You told me before there was a four in the tens place, so it's a 100. It's hard to read in the cloud. Um, oh, there we go. Let's save it to the hard drive instead of the cloud. Yes, there we go. 
About how much? About 140 miles. There it is. Perfect. Awesome. You got it. Perfect. So that's and now a, I have to explain um, what You have to explain. Well, just write on there that Ms. Delenic and Mr. Cook said <laughs> that it was right. That's, and Ollie. I think Ollie. your teacher would be fine with that, right? And Ollie. And Ollie. Ollie. Sorry. I, I wasn't Guys, trying to explain. you, Guys, come on. I'm working really hard. You have really to explain hard. how you did it, Charlotte? Yeah. So I would say that this work right here that we did with these numbers and showing how you rounded right here is really a good part of your explanation. And subtraction. So that was both two different, you said explain your math thinking, is that right? Is that the last question? Yeah. Okay, so we definitely use rounding. We showed what we rounded the grandparents distance from, uh, to. We showed what we rounded 411 to. And we also came up with the fact that this would be a closer estimate by rounding to the nearest 10. So it sounds like you have a really good answer for this homework. You know what else you could put in there? What you don't need? What don't what? you need? What? What didn't you use at all? Oh, that's right. The poor cousins got left the out. The cousins yeah. got left out completely. We still love them. We didn't need the cousins for anything, so you can always put that in part of your explanation as well. Good for nothing cousins. Jeez. <laughs> it's gotten away. Okay. Okay. Well, we're happy that helped, but guess what it's time for? What? Oh, man, so glad you asked. The it's time part. for your prize. Let's see what you win. <laughs> Ready? That, puck, that pick up prize. Wow. I don't know where to drop it. Oh, anywhere. Just anywhere pick up like. Gosh, uh, I'm so no, bad except at Except for this. there. It just has to slide. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Another pen. All right. Yay. It even says math homework helpers on it with the phone number. Very cool. <laughs> so <laughs> never forget you. it. Shouldn't even have to You're write welcome. it down. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for calling. Do we have another caller? Oh, I think so. You guys ready? Let's hear yeah, it. You're I'm on ready. a roll, huh? Okay, on the phone now from Newtown Elementary. She's in fourth grade. Okay. This is Amaya. Hello. Hi. Hey, Hi. Amaya. Hey, Amaya. How are you? Good. Hey, is it snowing over there yet? No. <laughs> yeah, it's not here either. It's but pretty we're ready. cold, though. We're, yeah, it's cold. It's oh. cold. It's chilly. Luckily, this, we have extra feathers. You guys want to see what I do in the cold? What do you, you do? Like this. <laughs> like you gotta hunker down to stay warm, you, you know? Hunker down, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's a good word. Hey Amaya, we're ready for a math problem. What do you have? Eighty-seven times eight. Eighty-seven times eight? Short and sweet. Done. In wow. fourth grade, Amaya, are you working with the standard algorithm? No, or I didn't need that. We you didn't need that. Okay, well that's good. Uh, what about so something we like an area model? An area, area model. model. Perfect. That was my next question. You got it. So, um, do they do area models in middle school? I do teach my students how to do that, but I might call it something a little bit different. But I think I still split up the eighty-seven, right? Uh huh. Amaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I split it up into what? Two parts, eighty and seven. Perfect. Sort of like a partial product. Yep. Thing. And then what do I do with the eight? The other side. I put it right here. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I go ahead and make my box. And what has to go inside each of the boxes? Whatever number times that eight, and eight times that, and nx is zero. Perfect. So I always draw these little arrows. Eight times eighty goes in this box, right? So let's do. What's eight times eight? It's one of our double facts. Eight times eight is sixty something. I'm listening. Do you know eight times eight, Amaya? Um, no. Ali, can you help us out? Oh, yeah, sure. Eight times eight? Uh-huh. Uh, that's eight times eight, I believe, isn't it? It is. It's a double. Wait. Uh -huh. No, we need the actual product of eight times eight. You know what you should do, though? You should flip it around and do eight times eight. That would be easier. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. What so, is eight times eight, then? Either oh, way. Oh, well, it's eight. You take an eight, and then you times another one. You guys, come on. This is simple. Eighty, you know, eight and times eight. Keep going. Right. <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> what? what? Eight times eight. Why are you holding things up? So let's go with 64, OK? 64? That's you what got I was going to say. And then you said something about annexing that zero. Is that right? Yeah. All right, perfect. So 8 times 7 is close to 64. It just has one less 8. And we're going to go with 56. 56. You got it. Perfect. So what's the final step then, Amaya, to figure out your total product? Add it. Perfect. You got yep. it. I'm going to put it right over here. We have 640. And it's really important to line up those place values. We have 0 yeah. plus 6 is 6. I need your help this one for Amaya. What is 5 plus 4? Nine. Okay. Good. We're going to bring down that six. What is our final product, Am Amaya? 696. 696. You got it. Perfect. Good nice. job. Nice. I that love the area model. Yeah, that was it pretty really straight It really breaks it down nicely. <laughs> hey, Amaya, guess what it's time for? Time to pick your prize. Yes, the prize. Let's yes. go back and do it a little better this time. Here we go. A flash drive. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. I think you say USBA. Is that right? USBA. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah. Or is it USB? I always forget. Thanks, Amaya. Thanks for calling. See you, Amaya. Thank you. Ooh, we got a middle school caller. Oh, All who's right. on the phone now? Who's on the phone? Is this Bobby? We have Bobby from Arbutus Middle School, sixth grade. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Bobby. Bobby. How Hi. are you? What are you Hi. working on? I am from Arbutus Middle School. Awesome. We're so glad you grade, called. Right? Do you have a math problem for us to help you with? Yes. We okay. are ready. What you got? Eight. Eight or eight third. Eight thirds divided by. I heard it. I think I heard eight thirds. Thirtieth. Eight thirtieths. Okay. Ah. Thirtieth. Cool. Eight thirtieths, and you said divided by what? Um, divided by two thirds. Okay. So, which uh, method? Bobby, do you guys use at Arbutus in middle school for dividing fractions? Keep, change, flip. OK. We're doing keep, change, flip. OK. Did you ever try to find common denominators? I was just going to ask, because. <laughs> you keep the first one the same. Okay. You change the, mul the division into multiplication, and then you switch the, um, dump the um, three on the bottom with, with the three on the top. You find the reciprocal. I call yeah. it the, I call oh, it the I KFC method. The keep, I was going to quiz change. them what it was called. I'm sorry. Did I take Bobby, that? What was the, what is it called when you flip the fraction from numerator and denominator? Keep, change, flip. Well, what's this called, though? Two thirds, and then you have three over two. One over one, <laughs> one, and. You're right, but. I always one, one and one. I mean, yeah, one and one half. Yep, it's a reciprocal. I'm sure you probably learned that, right? I have. Okay, so now, did you have? Do you? Wh ha what do you do here? I'm gonna see if you know the trick. You multiply the eight and three on the top. Okay. That makes twenty-four. Good. And you multiply the thirty and the two, and that makes sixty. Perfect. Okay. Did One you, last step before you're done. What's you that? Must simplify. You gotta simplify. Gotta simplify. That's right. That's Bobby, can I show you how to simplify first before you solve? Yes. Did you ever do that in school? Yes. Oh, that's my favorite. Yes, it is. It's, it makes it so much easier. Hmm? So, can you simplify with either of these numbers? Yes. Which they're, ones? They're both. They're both. They're both of a separate. So you can you can um, simplify it really easy. So what could the eight now become? The eight could come become a four. Yep. Good. And the two is now uh, a and one. The three. Well, 
The two can come a one. Yep, and what about the three and the 30? How could you reduce three and 30? You could um, divide it by one, the, third, the three by one. Well, one's never going to reduce for us, so think of one other number. I think it becomes one, maybe. Yes. How does it become one? What would you divide by? Um, you would divide by one. By three. To get okay. the one, right. To get one, and then what's 30 divided by three? 30 divided by three is 10. Very good. Good. So I'm going to do my way in blue, and then I'm going to see if Mr. Cook, maybe you can simplify the 24 60th. Absolutely. Is this called cross simplifying? Is that what that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't <laughs> that sure. That sounds very official. So I'm going to simplify one more time, and I get two fifths. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping that Mr. Cook gets the same thing when he tries it his way. So if I was to simplify 24 over 60, if I didn't do the cross simplifying method, what could I divide 24 and 60 by? Two. You can divide them by two. Yep. I could. Yep. And it would simplify to 12 over 30, and I think I can keep going. Another two? Yes. And that will make 6 over 15. Perfect. And then I believe 6 and 15 can both be divided by, I don't think 2 anymore, but now, can it, what to, now what can it be divided by? 3. You got it, Bobby. <laughs> Very good. All right. 6 divided by 3 is? 2. And 15 divided by 3 is? 5. Very good. Perfect. Did we so get the same? Looks like we got the same one. Awesome. You know what? Living simply is a great way to go through life. <laughs> simplify, you know? Everybody needs to simplify more. Everyone should. I just like that you get your choice on which way you want to simplify it. I try to simplify every day. Good. If you were to put 30, <laughs> 8 over 30 and 2 thirds both over 30, I think you would have had 8 twentieths, 8 over 20. Is that right? Yes. You know, speaking of Which, simple, that yep. looks really complicated, but for Bobby, it was pretty simple. Yeah, He was. was very good with all and those Bobby, facts. Bobby, you were really quick with your facts. Very too. fast. And you I think if we them. divide the top and bottom by that, another way to get two-fifths. Perfect. So three yep. different methods, all with two-fifths. I fifths love the common the denominator eight. method. If, if you can do that, it's the best, I think. It's easy. Bobby, does that help you out? <laughs> yes. All right. Guess what it's time for? Prize time. Yeah. Prize time. Price time. Let's here we go. Here. Let's see where it falls. The pen. Four color pen. All right. Boy, the You're pen's popular. You'll we'll get it soon, Bobby, in the mail. Yeah, got a pen. Got Yay. a pen. But it has four colors on yeah. it, so don't, don't let that confuse us. Not That's just a normal pen. pen. Call Bobby. again. Get your friends to call. We need more middle school kids. Yeah, that was okay. a tough question. <laughs> bye bye. Call back next bye. week. See ya. See ya. You know we use math in so many ways in we life. We do, mm -hmm. yeah. Not even just in class. Nope. So we're going to head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. Did you open it? Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day everywhere and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here with Kimberly Panchagar, an art teacher at Stemmers Run Middle School. Miss Panchagar, is math really a part of art? Hello, Maria, thanks for coming to Stemmers Run. And it sure is, and I'm going to show you an example. <gasps> Great, let's hear it. Maria, do you know what primary colors are? Mm, not really. Primary colors are the three main colors on the color wheel, red, blue, and yellow, that all of the other colors come from. By mixing primary colors together, we get brand new colors, like purple, green, and orange. In fact, artist Pablo Picasso had three different recipes for mixing colors. Let's look at how he would make the color green. Okay. Here's where the math comes in. So recipe one says that one part of blue with three parts of yellow, or in other words, one to three, Recipe two says four parts of blue with eight parts of yellow, or four to eight. This is also one half. And recipe three is three parts of blue with five parts of yellow, three to five. The more blue paint we have in our ratio determines how dark the green paint is. And this works for all colors. Oh, wow, I see. 
So that's just one example of how math and art work together. Ratios, colors, wow, I've learned so much. I love art. Thanks for stopping by, Maria, and please come back again. Okay, adios. That was really fascinating. That, that was, was awesome. I love that we do those. I love art. Do you guys like to paint? I do. Me too. Very it's so colorful. much fun. Sometimes I paint with my feathers. It's just a big old sloppy mess. <laughs> but oh, it's fun. You got all purple and things? Yeah. I like that it. That makes sense. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> hey, you guys ready for another caller? We are, absolutely. All right. On the phone now from Franklin Elementary, we have Brendan, who's in fifth grade. Hello. Hi. Hey, Hi. Brendan. How's How are going? you, Brendan? Good. All right. Did you, are you having a good week so far? Yes. Hey, is it Wednesday over there, too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, <laughs> it's Wednesday sure. over here, too. All right. That's a small world. Yeah, it small is. Small world. We're all on the same day. Hey, we're ready for a math problem. What do you got for us? Okay. Um, it's a part A, part B question. Oh, cool. okay. Okay. Um, the floor of the rectangular meeting room has a raised platform that is the same length as the room, and it is one-sixth the width of the room. So it has the same so, length as the room? Yeah. Okay. The length is six and two fifth yards long. Of the room or the of the or the length's the same? Um of the whole room. It's the length is six and two fifth yards. Six and two fifth. You were okay. gonna wipe that off with your hand. Like a chalkboard. <laughs> I saw that. And the width is seven and one third yards. The width of the room or? The room. Okay. Seven and one third? Yes. Okay. That's a very fall red. Okay. Kind of matches your shirt. <laughs> yeah, it does actually. <laughs> and you were trying to figure out what was the final question? Um, so the first question is what is the width of the raised problem and write an equation to model your work? Okay, so what's the difference again between the width for both? The width is long. It's like sideways. Well, what was the difference between the width of the raised part and the room? Um, so we're trying to find out the width of the um, and raised said, Yeah. And it was one, th was, did How you say far it was one away third? Was it? A third away from the, the room. The room is a square. Well, it can't be a square if you gave me those dimensions. It can be squarish. It, it was like the first um, part Could of the problem. Could you read the question again for us, Brendan? Um, the length. Wait, is length going upward? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I was counting the length going this way. Whichever numbers, you know on the length side. <laughs> um, so Can you read the problem again for us? Um, the floor of a rectangular meeting room has a raised platform that is the same length as the room and is one-sixth the width of the Six. room. Six. And it's one-sixth of the width? Of the length, I think. Of, of the width. Of the width, okay. Oh. Which, it, according to your problem, is seven and one-third, right? Yes. Okay. And you're supposed to find out the width of the raised platform? Yeah. Got it. Is there a key word at all? Because I did hear something in there that's going to really help us out. Any kind of um, key word that you know in there that's going to help you figure out what kind of problem to do? Like, um, like which operation are we going to use to solve this? Um, Hopefully it's not a division. feather removal operation. No, that would not be good. Yeah, no. I would not be doing division right now. The key, do you know what the key word is, Mr. Cook? I think it's of. If yes, of, you I always say I of means multiply. So of I think you word. told me one sixth of the width, right? Yeah. Per, as soon as you see that somewhere, guess what you're going to want to think? Multiply. Of means multiply. Okay. Uh, so you're going to yeah. do one sixth of, there's my multiply, of. the seven and one third, that's the width. Does that make sense? You're doing a sixth 
of the seven and one third? Yeah. Okay, the length isn't important to us, right? It might come into yeah. handy for part B. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know what part B is. You're right. It might be like an area problem <laughs> or something. So you've been practicing multiplying fractions? Um, yes. Perfect. What, go ahead and talk us through what you need to do. Um, what do you need to do with the mixed number? Yeah, where's that um, 7 go? You, co you convert it to an improper fraction? Perfect. That works. Yep. That works. You, you could always break it apart, too, and do it by itself. And Don't break it. No, we won't. It's, it's, Gee, it's, they won't have to it's a buy math it. term. It's, it's, we're not going to be diff I, I promise. Nobody's going to get hurt. No we can tape it hurt. back. We got tape. Do you oh, know yeah. what's, oh, do you know seven times three plus one? Twenty-one. Yeah, Twenty-two. Yep. So now I have one-sixth times twenty-two over three. Yes. Okay. Do you know what you want to do now? Um... So you're going to do 22 times 1. Good. Then 3 times 6. Okay. So your answer would be 22, 18. Perfect. Okay. Very good. You want to keep simplifying? Simplify. Great way to live life. So how many <laughs> times does 18 go into 22? One. Once. Good. And how many are left over? Four. Perfect. Very good. One and four eighteenths. And I think we can continue to simplify. Yeah, so the complete simplified number would be 1 and 2 ninths. Perfect. Very yeah, good. Awesome. So that would be the width of the raised portion, right? Like the stage. Uh -huh. So there's part mm -hmm. A. Okay. That was 1 sixth, right? Right. I hope so. Well, that's just that's the raised portion of the room, the right. width. I just want to make sure that we figured out the right thing, right? Yeah, what, what was part B? The suspense is killing me. Estimate the area of the floor, including the raised platform. Ah. Oh, so we need to do it's a good the thing area you guys of the original room and the area of the raised platform. So seven and one third would estimate to about what? Seven. Yeah. Perfect. Six and two fifths. Is that closer to six or two? Would that be rounded to seven? Um, six. Great. Yep. Yep. So there's our room, and we have to find that area. What's that estimated area when you multiply those two rounded numbers together? Forty-two. Okay. Let's so, put it in a bubble. We got to put it in a bubble. Yep. yep. I would say the estimated bubble. area. What is forty-two? I don't know if you're dealing. What are you dealing with? Feet. Feet. Or yards, I think. Square yards. Yards, yards squared. Yes. Okay. That's a lot of grass to mow. And then. Well, it's a floor, so that's good. Ah. Mm -hmm. See, I thought you said yard. It's a room. Oh, I thought yard. You said yard. Yeah, got it, got it. Right. The area of the raised platform would be what? What numbers do you need for mm -hmm. that? This is including the raised platform. Okay. So you don't have to add the raised platform area along with the room area? No. Oh, okay. It's included. It's inclusive. Got Alrighty. It. Yeah, because the raised platform is really on top of here. Mm -hmm. That right? makes sense. It's okay. raised up. Yeah. Perfect. That Very cool. Sense. So that's A and B. We answered it, right? Yep, this is B. Well, yeah. he did a lot of the work. We just wrote it down. Here's uh -huh. A. Very good. Brendan, does that help you out? Yes. All right. Awesome. We're happy you said that because guess what? <laughs> It's time to drop the puck. I'm going to drop it all the way over to the right side, oh and let's gosh. see if what we get. Where's it going to It go? went on to the right side. The we got water the water bottle. bottle. Hope you're thirsty over there okay. at Franklin. <laughs> Thank you for calling, Brendan. Thank Thanks, you. Brendan. You could put, like, juice in there, right? Or is it only water? It's most likely water, especially if you leave it for school. a while. Yeah. Does it come with water? Um, we it? might be able to ship it, it out. We'll, we'll talk more, to Jen though, about the weight, that. The weight of the shipping might cost more. Oh, that would. Oh. We should figure that should be a problem that we figure out. That it might be maybe spill. next time. We'll save that for next time. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of which, we are going to go uh, before we take our next caller. Though we are going to head out one more time to our very own ba Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a mighty math yeah. minute. What All right. Hi, my name is Clarissa, and this is your mighty math minute.
Today I'm going to show you a number line using A times 4. So first, you want to start with 0. And you want to skip count 1, 8. And you want to skip count and so like 8, 16. It's sixteen twenty four, and then you. This is going to be my last jump because I'm jumping four times, and, and eight in each. So. If you were going to go, so 0, 8, 16, 24, and 32. So 8 times 4 equals 32, and that's how you can use a number line. Awesome, huh? Yeah, that was cool. She was very good with her number line. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Eight times four. I love four. number lines. Yep. Uh -huh. It helps kind of visualize it, you know? It really does yes. a good job. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you guys ready for another caller? Absolutely. All right. On the phone now from Hampton Elementary, we have from third grade, Tessa. Hello. Hi. I love her car. Hi, hey. Tessa. How Hi, are Tessa. you? Oh, that's a Tesla. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Tesla. No, that's a Tesla car. This is our friend Tessa. Tessa. Hi, Tessa. Hi. You having a good week? Yeah. You ready to rock some math? Yeah. Rock and rock some math. So are we. What kind of math problem you got? Um, it's a paragraph. Okay. We're ready. There are 40 people in a line for a Ferris wheel. Each car holds four people of, if each car is full of everyone, is able to go on the ride, how many cars are there? All right. Okay. Let's re. Can you go so. back one more time, Tessa? Could you reread that problem for us? Yeah. Sure. There are forty people. Forty people. In a line for a Ferris wheel, each car holds four people. If each car is full and everyone is able to go on the ride, how many cars are there? So the yep. Ferris wheel is completely filled. All the cars are full, with, filled with four people each. Look at this. That's even better than your basket. That is right. a beautiful Ferris wheel. And four people are in each one? Yes. Yeah. So what should we do? Whoops. First of all, what operation do you think we're doing here, Tessa? Um, either repeated and subtraction or repeated and addition. OK. So what would you like to do? Um, repeated subtraction. Okay. Sort of like we did the first Earlier, problem yep. with the baskets and the oranges. Ooh. Now we have people on a ride. Maybe these, these people... Which color should we do for that? Have the baskets with uh, them. Carnivalish. Let's, let's go with pink. That's okay. cool. So each person... So I'm just going to put each person in one car. Is that okay? One in each car? Yep. That's only happening once, so... I was going to say, that's going <laughs> to... But it's beautiful, though. That's... He's the main one. It's the conductor. That's you, Mr. Yep. Cook. All right, perfect. All right, so I got rid of how many people? One, two, three. Um, four. Looks like you put in 10. Yeah. So we have 10 people in the car so far. Those lucky people, I want to ride. Is there, there room is. in there for an ostrich? 30 left, right? Yeah. OK, so I just went and did another 10. 20. Mm -hmm. 20 more to go. <laughs> Don't forget the purple ostrich. Put me in there somewhere. Yeah, okay, please. I will. Can you can you ride with me, Ollie? Whoops. I yeah, you want to share a car? I'm in the front. Shotgun. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what are you, what are you doing? That's supposed to be you, man. Oh. 
Okay. So it looks just there's like There's another me. 10. And then... Ooh, some of them got squished in. That's okay. Well, there, there's, I mean, four people in a car. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of people okay. in one car. So now that I did that, how many cars did we use up? Um, how many boxes do we have there? We used them all. So you have these boxes, and you've been putting four people in each car, right? Yeah. How many did I end up using up for all 40 people? Oh, how many carts? Yep. Yeah, how many boxes on the ride? Can we count together? Here we Four. go. There's one. One. <laughs> I always want to do it. Here we got two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. five six, six, six. Seven. seven eight, eight. Nine. Nine. Ten boxes. Did you yeah, see that? that? I, I was, didn't mean to block you, but... No, you were very thoughtful. Oh, you're, I appreciate that. So how many cars do you need on the Ferris wheel, then? Ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got ten. Awesome. This might have worked out better, actually, if I just made the boxes and put four people in each one. Yeah, but it wouldn't have looked as beautiful as your arcade. Cool. Cool. No, that's fine. Yeah, your Ferris wheel <laughs> looks be very beautiful. Here. So you've used ten cars. Is that what the question was asking? Yeah. Okay. Everyone gets a ride. Now, besides just repeat a subtraction, do you know how you could do that in one step? No. What grade? Third. Third. You're going to end up probably going into division soon, mm -hmm. and that's what you're leading up into. So I don't know if Mr. Cook knows that they'll do division next. <laughs> that's what this would be definitely leading into. And in third grade, they definitely get started with basic facts, with division facts. So. We, we know a little bit of division. Yeah, good. That makes sense that you're doing this together. Then that's good. So I bet Tessa knows that four times ten is forty, and then she'll know that the inverse operation is going forty divided by four is ten, and there's our, our ten rides. All right, and Tessa, you know what's next? Wait, wait, I got a question. Oh, hey, Tessa, start. have you ever ridden a Ferris wheel? No. Oh. oh, you're gonna have to now. Would yeah. you would you be scared to ride one because they go way up there? Yes. Yeah, they're Just a little freaky. Don't stand on the Ferris wheel car like Mr. Cook is. <laughs> yeah, or that's hang true. off the edge like like Ollie is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All hey. right, here we go, Tessa. Are be you ready? Here we go. We got the pen. Another hey. pen. All right. I hope we ordered enough. I know. Poor that poor squishy guy. He yeah, he's all by himself. He's just yeah. chilling there. He's happy though. He he's looks very happy. happy. Tessa, we're glad you called. Thank you. Thank have you a good week. Bye-bye. Have you guys ever ridden a Ferris wheel? We have. Oh, I right. have. I have. Yes. Were you scared? Uh, no, I really liked it, actually. Yeah? It goes around Were you around. scared when you went up um, there? They go way up there. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. I think it depends but you know where what? you are. <laughs> it's important to power through your fears. You're Sometimes right. you just kind of go, mm, and you do your best, and then it turns out fun. Yeah, it is. You you're, you're pretty well-rounded, bud. All right, you guys All right. ready for the next caller? We are. All right. Who is it? On the phone now from Norwood, we have Travis in third grade. Hello. What's up, Travis? Hello. How you doing? Great. All right. We're ready to solve your math problem. Let's do it. What kind of problem you got? Um, we're rounding to the nearest hundred. Okay. Rounding to the nearest hundred. Round. Perfect. That would yeah. And what's our number that we're trying to round? 167. Okay. To the hundreds? Yes. Cool. We got that. So if you're rounding to the hundreds, hundreds, Travis, what, what uh, number am I going to look at first? If we're rounding to the nearest hundred, the number that we're going to look at first is... What digits in the hundreds place, buddy? The one. Good. The one. Yep. Good. How about that then you have to check out your next door neighbor? What does the six tell us? Um, it says Tristan collects 167 stickers last week and 192 stickers this week. Okay. And so. so we're supposed to round the numbers. So let's round 100, 167 to the nearest 100. Let's look at the tens place. 
Is that 10 okay. going to tell us that 167 is closer to 200? Or is the 1 going to stay the same because 167 is closer to 100? 167 is closer to 200. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. So our rounded number would be 200. And did we have to round any other numbers in the problem? 192. Okay. I bet you could do that one on your own. Yeah, I bet he could. How would you do it, Travis? The only thing I would have to do is count from the one in the nine and know that it's going to 200. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Good job, Travis. You didn't awesome. even need so our help. Go to also 200. In the cloud. In the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Is that all the question it was, just rounding those two? We're supposed to find the estimated sum. Oh, okay. Oh, well, so now that you've rounded both to 200, what does sum mean? It's the something. The total of an equation. What type? 200 plus 200. Yep. Yes, There plus. it is. There's the, the plus. That's, good. That's the operation we need. And then what? what is 200 plus 200? 400. Perfect. So that would be your estimated sum. There we go. There we go. That was In easy. Cloud, please. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Travis, does that help you out? Yes? All right. I think Travis is just ready for All his right. prize. He's ready I for his he prize. Is. Let's see what it is. <laughs> you guys ready? Let's drop the puck on the puck to win a prize. Wow. I'm going to drop I haven't dropped it on the left side. Let's oh, give yeah. some squishy love. Maybe get the squishy, squishy guy, guy some love. Oh, there it is. Hey. Yay. There's the squishy guy. We should send Travis two squishy guys because uh, he might be the only uh -oh. one that won. We have to talk to management about right. that first. Yeah, but, we got to okay. check with approval. We got to get approval there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for calling. Thanks, bye bye. Travis. That was really nice bye. manners. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm glad we ended on a, such a high note there, too. And the squishy Absolutely. guy. Our He's happy now. squishy guy mm -hmm. because that, unfortunately, is all the time that we have Ooh, for this no, episode. Bummer. So make sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online or on our YouTube what? page. That's I new. That. That's awesome. What? So check oh it my out. Gosh. Be sure to tell your friends to watch too. We need lots of callers. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, Only here, here on BCPS TV. TV.